Hey guys, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. So these are pen cases. Yes, I have two of them in front of me, but I am unboxing three pens today. Yes, three pens, all from Zodiac Pen Co. on Instagram. I will leave his details below. The first one, I believe is in this box. Yes, the first one in this box I ordered back Actually, I ordered all three of them in June. I did order a few pens in June. Uh, and then uh, this one was, gosh, I need to look it up, hold on. So this first one was purchased on May 23rd, actually. So this was part of the May pens, but then I had it sent to Jack Hernandez in Calgary to get the nib ground. And then these two were purchased on June 15th. They said they were delivered on what day was it? Was it last week? They said they were delivered, but they weren't to be found anywhere. Oh yes, they were delivered last Thursday the 29th or the 29th or 30th. But anyway, they said they were delivered. They weren't in my post box, had no idea. So I actually put out, um, did a claim with Canada Post and Canada Post couldn't find it. And then today, July 7th, in a neighborhood Facebook group, Somebody posted, does anybody know, Karina, this was sent to my address in error. And I just literally ran across the street and picked this up. So, first one. I just have to say that Zodiac Pen Co. is a smaller custom pen maker. And he turned these around very, very quickly for me. He showed me all of the blanks that he had. And he said that he's actually, he knows Jonathan Brooks of Carolina Pen Co., Carolina Pen Company. So these were three that I had been looking at for a while, but I didn't see any that really spoke to me. So this first one, let's move this one out of the way. This first one is, oh, it is Water Lily Koi. So... The package came like this, but then it had a note in it from Jack Hernandez because it sent it straight to Jack Hernandez. But anyway, it comes in this clamshell box with, it came with this card as well, Zodiac Pen Company from Bart, who has been amazing to work with. Highly recommend him. And he has different models of pens. So this model is the Virgo model. So it is the smaller size. And this is the Water Lily Koi from Jonathan Brooks. And what I loved about this particular one is how bright the pink is. And then even the yellow turns a little bit green in some places. And the thing with these blanks from Jonathan Brooks is that each and every single one is completely different. There are some water lily koi that are more white and washed out. So I really wanted one where the pink was very, you could really see the pink. You could see the chatoyancy and different levels in there and the different depths. I didn't really want it all washed out. I wanted every color to be seen and to be differentiated. So this was beautiful. And then, so let's uncap that. So it is a screw cap. And there was an initial problem with the section, but uh, Bart sent out a new one immediately and now it is perfect. So this has a Yovo number no. six steel nib that is fine, but has been ground to a, can you see that? Fine, cursive, smooth, italic. So that means that it's a bit sharper of a stub nib. Absolutely love that. I got ink on my fingers, but this is the way that this fits in my hand. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely comfortable. There's not a huge step between the section and the body, which I really, really like. And just even uncapping or taking out the section, I've already inked this, but it comes with the converter. The threads are quite smooth and just the craftsmanship here to get a great shaped and great weighting pen as well. This is one that actually, yeah, you can post, but I don't post my pens and it looks a little bit like it might fall off. Plus I don't wanna do anything to scuff the top here. But in terms of capping and uncapping, the reason that I include this is because one, other reviewers include it, but also some people find this really important. On a day-to-day -day basis, this is not how I uncap my pens. I kind of just screw it off and then go from there. But anyway, so let's go with this white section to measure. 
So one, two, about two and a quarter, two and a half. Not a big deal for me, because I mean, it's just, it's so beautiful. I can't even. So that is the first pen. <laughs> yes, I said that, the first pen from Zodiac Pen Co. The second and third pens are also from Zodiac Pen Co. And they are in this box. Uh, so you can already see here that it is the Abalone and the Primary Manipulation one from Brooks in the Virgo models with Yovo number six nibs, both in extra fine and fine. Again, with Bart's information there. So it came in this clamshell box and here is the first one, the Primary Manipulation in the Virgo model. So the same model as the Water Lily Koi but in the primary manip manipulation and look at that. Look at the different colors and look at the swirls. I ended up selling my other primary manipulation because I found that that particular one was mostly reds and the yellows. You couldn't see much of the blues or the pinks, whereas this one, you can really get an even mix of all the colors. And I really love the white swirls in there. I think the white really helps to delineate the different colors that are in here rather than making them all look like one mixed pool of colors. Jonathan Brooks does great work and Bart of Zodiac Pen Co. has turned this into a beautiful, beautiful pen. So this pen, again, probably the same, but I'll do it as well. And, you know, starting from here, you've got one, and this one comes out a little bit before that one. So then, this also comes with a Yovo, and this time I decided to get the Rhodium nib. So the Yovo number six nib in a fine. And this also comes with a converter. But again, because it is um, the resin, I believe you can eyedropper it if you wanted to. And then for this one, this one seems like you could post it a little better. And actually that doesn't back weight it at all. It feels really nice in the hand posted. I don't normally post my pens because of where, you know, normally it's quite heavy and it's also quite long, but even where the cap sits probably would be uncomfortable at this part of my hand, but that posts very nicely, very, very nicely. And I don't say that very often. So that is, me. hold on, let's just look at the swirls here some more. Like, look, there's a little bit of yellow. And I love that the white creates different depths of the colors. This is just magnificent. I am in love with this. And I love that there's so many variations of this. So many variations. So that is number two. Number three. Yes, I know there were three, but it was purchased over the course of two months. Okay. <laughs> this one is the abalone. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm speechless for this one because this is, I have been looking for this particular blank for, I say a while, but for at least a couple of months now. And most places only have like the blue or the red abalone, which are both beautiful, but I wanted this abalone because you can see there's purple, there's hints of blue and green along with that white. It's just beautiful. This is stunning. Again, in the Virgo model, because I found that that is the size that works well for me. This again has a steel Yolo number six nib, and this one is in the extra fine. But just look how beautifully that fits in my hand. Beautiful. And then again, the threads are not sharp here at all. Very small step up to the body of any, which I prefer. I would prefer that the section and the, the body have more of a smooth transition and seeing the cap, like even the cap itself, there is not a huge transition for that. So that takes a lot of work to be able to get the cap to still, you know, not have a huge step from the body and still not have a huge step between the section and, and the body itself. But then even look at the grip. How cool does that all look together? It is amazing absolutely amazing so i'm going to show you all these three pens compared to my other pens all right so just showing you all three pens again these are all in the virgo model so they should all be 
pretty much the same, but actually now that I'm looking at them, the water lily koi is a bit longer, but it should be the same. So maybe it was just the way that it was turned, but again, hand turned versus machine, you know, versus producing hundreds at, at a time. And you can kind of see like slight variations in just the shape of it, but I like that it just works, works well for me. So I'm gonna compare it to one of my favorite pen models here. Compare it to the Estabrook SD in terms of length. I am going to compare it to the Narwhal Nautilus, which is longer than everything, but you can tell it's also wider than everything. And I'm also going to compare it to the Le Bon Rosa, which is also another favorite. And then move this up a bit. One more I'm gonna compare it to is my Sailor Pro Gear. And then I'm just trying to see what else in my collection that I could compare it to. So instead of the Sailor Pro Gear, compare it to the Pilot Kakuno. And where is it? Here we go. And move that quickly. My Pelican M600. So you can see size-wise what it, what these three models look like compared to these three pens. So I'll go ahead and uncap all of these. So there are all of the pens uncapped, and it looks like the Water Lily Koi is actually the longest out of all of the pens. And you can see the differences in nib sizes as well. Like the Pelican M600 looks like a much smaller nib than the Yovo number six, but I think it's just the way that the nib is bent and curved. And then the primary manipulation, it is actually definitively smaller than the Water Lily Koi, and then it's more similar in size to the Abalone. But then even the Estabrook SD is actually shorter than, other than the uh, Le Bon Rosa, the I cannot speak at the moment, the Estabrook SD looks like it's about the second shortest. But in terms of width, it looks very similar to the SD and maybe slightly bigger than the SD, which is why I find these three pens so, so comfortable. So let's go ahead and weigh all these. So in terms of weight, I apologize for the glare there. The Water Lily Koi is gonna roll up. It's about 20 grams capped and then uncapped. It is again gonna roll, oh no, 15 grams. So actually not too heavy of a pen at all. And then with the primary manipulation, that is about 18 grams. So I would assume that the body would be about 13. Yep, 13 grams because then the cap is five grams. And then lastly, the abalone, which, oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. The abalone is 13 grams uncapped. I did that too quickly. And then capped, it is 18, 18. there we go. So the first pen that I will be doing a tester on I do that. Oh, that's so cute. Is my water lily koi. Let me make sure I'm on the right page here. So this is Zodiac. Oh my gosh. Pen Co. And Virgo Water Lily Koi. Oh my gosh. So I'm just gonna write purchased May 25th and the nib is a Yovo number six steel fine and it's ground into a cursive smooth italic by Jack Hernandez. And with the cursive smooth italic, you really do get that line variation. So down, you get the wider strokes and then across the thinner strokes. And compared to a stub nib, with the stub nib, you have the more rounded edges and you can't really see it there with my camera, but then with the cursive smooth italic, the edges are a little bit sharper. So this feels just a little bit slicier and I like that. 
and slicey not in the way that it's scratchy like you can definitely feel the nib on the page but it's a smooth slice going through and I just I absolutely love it so the ink is J Herbon uh, Ombre de Bermany Whoops, cannot spell. Oh boy. Close enough. And it's just a gorgeous wet writer. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. So that is the Water Lily Koi. And oh my goodness, I just, I cannot stop looking at that. The next pen is the Virgo in the Abalone. And I cannot stop looking at this. Oh my goodness, it's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And the way that this feels in my hand, I mean, oh my goodness. All right, so this has an extra fine steel nib. So once again, this is Zodiac, oh, love it. Zodiac Pen Co. And this is the Virgo in the Abalone. Oh my goodness, and this was purchased June 15th, 2023. And the nib is a Yoko number six steel extra fine nib. Gorgeous smooth just like a regular extra fine nib and it is just the way that I like it in terms of its width it's I don't want to say it's like a needle or a nail or anything but it's just the right amount of fine that I like so the ink that I put in here I thought was a very good match it is Sailor Ink Studio One, two, three. And doesn't it match? Like absolutely beautifully. Gorgeous. And again, I love Yogo nibs. And I love it when pen makers take the time to also tune their own nibs, which I know Bart does. So gorgeous. So that is the writing sample for the Zodiac pen in the Abalone. And last but not least is the Virgo model in the Brooks Primary Manipulation. And just look at the colors. I like that one side is more warm and then the other side is more cool toned. So you get every angle looks different and I love that. So this one has a different nib. It has a Yovo fine nib and it actually has some of the engraving on it as well. So this is Zodiac. Oh, so smooth. Pen Co. And the Virgo Primary Manipulation. And I apologize if you can hear my computer in the background. So this was purchased Yes, I did purchase two pens from Barton the same day. Purchased June 15th, 2023. And the nib is a Yovo number six steel fine nib. So I like going in between the fine and the extra fine, but you can already see a bit of a difference between the two. Again, I'm not using the same ink. The ink that I'm using in the primary manipulation is a Pilot of Roshizuku, so definitely wetter than most Sailor inks, but you can see just a bit of the line variation already and the line difference or the width difference. But this nib is so smooth and so wet with this ink. So the ink that I have in here currently is Pilot Hiroshizuku Kuchiku. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm in love with these pens. 
Oh, beautiful. So that is the Virgo model and the primary manipulation. Ooh, stay, stay. So there are all of my new pens from Zodiac Pen Company. Bart has been such a pleasure to work with and he's one of the newer um, custom pen turners as well. So these custom pens came very, very quickly. A lot of other pen makers do have quite a bit of a waiting list if you want a custom pen with them. And I was so happy that these were turned around so, so quickly. Um, but I'm assuming that once the word gets out, Bart is going to be a lot busier because he does fantastic work and is just amazing to deal with. This is why I love pens from custom pen makers is because you can actually speak to the person who's turning the pen. You speak to the person behind the business and there's just that personal aspect that brings this whole fountain pen community together. But that is it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.